guys, welcome to my channel, Court the Nest Realtor, and I am Court. If you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you are an oldie but a goldie, hey boy, hey, hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you came back to join me. And as you know, if you see me in the scrub top with the stethoscope, you should already know this is a nurse related video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about my experience on the first day as a nurse and how my patient died on my first day as a nurse. So if you are a nursing student, you like, child, what could really go wrong? If you are already a nurse and you like, girl, I know somebody else got some more, some battle wounds like me. Or if you just want to be plain old nosy, go ahead and stay tuned to this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and ring my bell. Ring my bell. so you can stay notified of my weekly videos your girl trying to be consistent okay so let's get into it so basically yes I did have a patient die on me on my first day as a nurse it did happen I was there I have the t-shirt okay so basically let me just give you some backstory when I first became a nurse I started as a nurse on a med search tele infectious diseases floor However, my manager also was the nurse manager of the hospice palliative care unit, okay? So, I hope you see where I'm going with this. What happened was, so my preceptor, we start our day. And if you want to know more about how me and, my, me and my preceptor met and how we got along and how it shaped my nursing career, I'll drop the video because I did do a video of if nurses eat their youngest, sit down with my first nurse and preceptor. So, go ahead. And see that in the description box but my preceptor she's like we were going through our day okay and our admission is a hospice admission so number one I'm at I'm like girl I don't even know how to do a regular admission must much less a hospice admission but girl whatever okay let's do it but as they tell us we're getting this patient she was like well let me go to lunch we kind of good I want to go to lunch and I want to get myself prepared so me I'm thinking like okay girl I'm gonna go to lunch with you too she was like no 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 I'm going to go to lunch, you're going to stay and wait on our patient in case they come. I'm looking at her like, girl, what am I supposed to do? But I said, okay, it is what it is. So, lo and behold, maybe like 10, 15 minutes into her lunch break, here comes the, um, the non-emergency ambulance EMTs. They bring the patient in. So, I reach out to the charge nurse and I'm like, listen, I'm getting admission. I really don't know what to do. But, you know, can somebody just show me, help me, or whatever? She's like, well, just put them on some oxygen. Just set them up, make sure they're comfortable, and Martha will be out shortly. I'm like, oh, my gosh, really, y'all? Nurses really do eat their young, because these heifers got me in here about to do something, you know, about to settle this. I don't even know what settle a patient mean. But nevertheless, your girl persists. So I went in there. And actually, the patient was what we'll call obtunded. Like, he wasn't really that responsive. And he wasn't in any distress or having any distressful breath Distress, yeah, distressful breathing. But, you know, I guess his family felt like um, that he needed to come in for symptom management. And so there he was. And as we were transitioning the, um, the patient from the stretcher to the bed, with the assistance of the EMT, one of the EMT says to me, like, all right, I think you probably got like 10 minutes um, for this one. You know, I think you might have 10 minutes. And I'm like, what is this man even talking about? You know, like, I have no idea what this guy is talking about. But okay, like, let me just get through this until Miss Martha come back. And so, okay, I go along. I do, you know, as we're transitioning, I look on the back, make sure I check the back for the skin, make sure I hook him up to his oxygen, make sure he's, you know, at least presentable, okay, when my preceptor comes back. And so, um, they leave, and then as I leave out, I, I, Miss Martha comes back to lunch, and I'm like, okay, Miss Martha, I miss you here, can you come take a look, make sure that he, um, I settled him right, you know, let me know what else I could have done, just trying to turn this into a learning experience, because this is literally my first day, I have no idea what I'm doing, as far as besides putting him on oxygen and making sure his bed sheets are straight and making sure all of that good stuff the basics is what i should be saying so she looks at me she's like okay come on let's go so we go in there and i guarantee you guys 10 minutes to the second to the minute we walk in and my boy takes his last breath with us right there 
And I say to Miss Martha, did he just take his last breath? She just looked at me and said, I think so. Go ahead and get Jenny. I'm like, for real, y'all? Like, this, this is, this is crazy. This is my first day. Like, what, what? I, I don't know nothing about this. So, the reason why she told me to go get Jenny is because on that floor, um, the charge nurse can't pronounce um, or in the hospice units, typically the charge nurse can pronounce or assess and make sure the patient has transitioned. So that's why I had to go get Jeannie. But, and from that point is where we, of course, provided empathy and postmortem care and do all the things in place that hospice nurses do. The point is that I had a patient die on me on the first day as a registered nurse. If that is not a... Wake up call, I don't know what is. But I will tell you this, it it prepared me going forward. I wasn't I, I wasn't afraid to take hospice patients. I, I was surrounded by a whole bunch of great nurses and that day it took away the fear that I could have ever had about dealing with hospice patients. They showed me how to provide empathetic postmortem care, how to provide um comfort to the bereaved and how to uh, treat patients with dignity as they transition to the other side. So with that being said, it was a learning experience and it was a learning experience that really put me in my book a cut above the rest because I was not afraid to get a hospice patient. I was not afraid to take care of them in the right way. To me, it became kind of second nature because my first day, that's what I was exposed to. So it's kind of crazy. I know some of y'all are going through like trials and tribulations. Y'all feel like y'all being hazed. Nurses, if they're young, but just know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. That sometimes the things that you're going through, they're learning experiences. And once you put them in your learning belt, in your learning cap, your thinking cap, everybody used to say that, once you go ahead and put these these experiences in your learning cap and in your experience bag, you become a stronger nurse. And here's a prime example. So after I finished my training with Martha, um, I was, like I said, my nurse manager was the nurse manager of both units. They had someone leave and I just came into work one day and sister girl had to put me in the hospice unit for like a month and a half. That was my schedule to work in hospice. No questions asked. Nobody consulted me. Your girl was in hospice. But guess what? I wasn't afraid. I knew how to take care of hospice patients. And also what prepared me before that was Miss Martha had to go down there a month. So while I was still precepting with her, I learned how to really become a hospice nurse. And then after that, I had to go on my own down there. And I it became, made me become a stronger hospice nurse. And that really kind of set me up to have a per diem position because once I left my role in med search, tell you I went to the ED and once I left the ED and transferred into a pack to the PACU at another facility, I still was a per diem hospice nurse and I remained a per diem hospice nurse for nine years. So see that one day, God is so faithful, God is so good, he's so sovereign that he turned that one day, that one day experience into something that helped sustain me through my career as a nurse because there are times that I didn't have a job or my travel nursing assignments were slow, I would work in hospice or I had a full-time job and maybe I wanted to pick up extra, I work in my hospice per diem or there were times where I had um no job and I worked in my hospice per diem. So it's like that experience, even though it kind of like shook me up, it kind of like threw me for a curveball, it actually helped prepare me to become a better nurse and a more well-versed nurse. So I just kind of wanted to